Hi everyone. Happy Saturday and good morning. Welcome back to Manchester's Finest for another mindful meditation session. So I'm Daniel Bradford from Mindful Acting and I'm here to guide you through another meditation together. So today's focus is going to be on befriending the inner critic or sometimes what I call the neurotic parent. So what do I mean by the inner critic? Well, we all know what it's like to have this voice inside our heads ostensibly that's kind of constantly commenting on what we're doing and the decisions we're making, criticizing it usually in the form that we're talking about today, telling us we're doing something wrong or we could have done something better, or we should have done this, or we should have done that. So this is what I call the inner critic and today's focus is going to be on learning to work with the inner critic instead of being in opposition to the inner critic, instead of being, being in an argument with it. So as I mentioned before, I often like to think of the inner critic as like a neurotic parent in that it really has the best of intentions for you. What it's saying is coming from a place of love, but it just might not be a very good communicator at the moment. So it's kind of like, I like to imagine like you're on a the football field and you know, there's the parent on this, this neurotic parent on the side, who's kind of screaming, telling you what you should be doing with the ball. Now, if you listen to that person, as they scream these uh, commands at you and you internalize that while you're trying to play the game, it's not going to go very well. You're going to become invested in their voice and you're going to stop being able to trust your intuition and your instincts and it's going to wrap you and tie you in knots. At the same time, the other response that we're most used to having is kind of getting into an argument with the inner critic, with this neurotic parent and starting, you know, in a petulant way, maybe yelling back, you don't understand me, kind of like that. Something that's in opposition, we're trying to fight back against the criticisms that it's throwing our way. But I think what you often find is that neither of these responses are particularly helpful and they both lead to a, a place of suffering. So what I want to suggest today is that we come from a place of befriending the inner critic learning to filter the words of the inner critic and understand its motivations, what it's trying to point to, what needs we might have that we're not addressing at the time, and letting go of the oppositional relationship to it or the identifying relationship with it. So we're coming into a more adult relationship with this inner critic in our minds. And through this, I think we can turn that inner critic eventually into an inner ally. So we're not going to get too invested in making it go away. We're going to let it be because it's already here. But we're going to start working with how to be with that voice, with those criticisms in a more mindful, accepting, non-judgmental, tolerant way that will eventually free us from the suffering that we often find is synonymous with the criticism. So take a seat or have a lie down, get comfortable. And we're going to do our practice together. It's going to be an eyes closed practice. It might be different from many other practices you've had before, especially that we've got a specific theme with this one. So just feel free to let go of any other experiences you might have had of what you think meditation should be, we're just going to let go of that and allow it to be whatever it is today. Okay? So sit back and find a comfortable position. As I say, we're going to do an eyes closed practice. Something I should mention is that anything that I say is merely an invitation you don't have to do anything and it's your mind and at the end of the day you're the one who has to be with your mind and also you will be the one the only one who can become the expert on your mind so trust your instinct is what I'm saying don't feel the need to get it right just allow my invitations in if they're helpful and otherwise just be with your experience as best you can so i'll ring a bell to start the meditation 
and I'll ring a bell at the end. And feel free to take a little bit of time to warm up into it. We're letting go of this should mind. Okay, here we are together on another Saturday morning. Here with our minds. Hopefully we've chosen a place with some relative quiet free of as many of the usual distractions that might be present in our daily lives. And we're just starting by Settling into the feeling of sitting or lying here. What does it feel like in the body? Just to be here right now. Notice if there's any resistance to tuning into the body itself. Notice if you have some resistance there. That's okay. Sometimes tuning into the body itself can be very emotional or uncertain. We're not quite sure what we'll find and our physical, tangible, embodied experience tends to be much more closely affiliated to our emotional world. It's why they're called feelings. So now I'd like to you to notice, if you can, any explicit or implicit messages you're getting from your own mind about how you're doing right now in terms of these questions around Am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? Tuning into the judgments that are very often present in relation to our experience. This thinking mind that tells us what we should or shouldn't be experiencing, what is right or wrong, good or bad. A 
And I invite you to just start by hearing the message out. Listen to the judgment. Let go of the need to push it away or deny it or reject it or fight with it. See instead if you can just be as you are right now, relatively still, listening to the words or, or the wordless judgment. And at the same time, notice if you have a tendency to over-identify with the message, to internalize it, to personalize it, to make it part of your identity. Notice if there's a tendency to agree or concede or surrender to the voice. Either of these two options, fighting or identifying tend to be motivated from places of shame, guilt, obligation. None of these are particularly fruitful motivators in the long term. What we might often find is that they lead to yet only more shame guilt and obligation. Instead, can we simply be with the message? Hear it out. And start to understand that this inner critic like a like an imaginary neurotic parent is simply trying to keep us alive to keep us from being what it perceives as humiliated perhaps or embarrassed publicly shamed trying to make sure we stay safe. And sometimes it might be overzealous in this goal. We might often find it cares less for our happiness as it does our immediate survival. And just like as we grow into adults and start to take on a new relationship to our our own parents, who are often subject to their own paternal or maternal neuroses, like any of us, we can start to give a little patience 
and understanding. to where they are coming from. And although it might not feel like it at first, can we translate these messages and see that they're coming from a misguided yet ultimately pure place of love? They just want us to be safe. And this inner critic just wants us to succeed. It wants us to be safe. It wants us to be fed and clothed. It doesn't want us to be humiliated. Ultimately, it wants what it thinks is for us to be happy. And if we can recognize that intention, can we start to open to that itself, that despite its words or ideas or corrections or criticisms, it's doing its best with limited tools to try to help us. And so can we even have a little bit of humor towards its communications? Can we appreciate sentiment while taking a little bit of humor in the clumsiness of its articulation. Can we let the inner critic be here with us? Because no matter what we've tried before, it doesn't seem to be going away. And if it did, might we miss it? Instead, can we look to change our relationship to it without changing it directly. Can I simply be with the inner critic without fighting with it or submitting to it, but being with it alongside it. Can we send it love? Perhaps the love that it lacked that led to such a black and white perspective of the world. Can we send kindness to the inner critic? Can we give it the understanding that we seek ourselves, the kindness that we seek, the support we seek?
patience. Can we hold the inner critic in our own innate, loving, open, spacious awareness? as the ocean holds tumultuous waves, but is unperturbed, unhurt, simply holding a context for this aspect of experience, letting go of the need to fight it or identify with it. Can I simply be with it kindly? We're now going to practice in silence for a few minutes together. At any point, the discursive, conceptual thoughts in your mind seem oppressive or overwhelming, you might try inviting in the body's experience as well, not instead, 
but allow it to become part of your awareness too. Sometimes it's easier to bring a sense of caring and support in the physical realm. Can I simply be with the feelings that come with the thoughts? Instead of becoming overly invested with the narrative of the thoughts themselves. Can I learn to develop tolerance, if only that for now, to this inner critic who's often here and unlikely to go away? but potentially open to a transformed relationship with us. But that journey is likely only to start with the kindness and acceptance and tolerance that we can model for it. Can we start the path of turning this inner critic into an inner ally? Can it become eventually our best and dearest friend? Okay, thank you for joining me this morning in our shared practice together. I hope that was helpful and gave you some food for thought to reflect on. If you appreciated the work we did together, you can find more about my particular work at www.mindfulacting.co.uk. And you can see my handles in the video on social media. Feel free to share or tag or ask any questions. And I'm happy to answer them just in the underneath the video. If you'd like to practice more with me, you can find me at the website I mentioned. We do a shared meditation practice together in a smaller group where you might be able to ask and give reflections and ask questions directly in real time uh, via Zoom with me. And so those sessions are Sundays at 6 p.m. And you can find the link on my website. Looking forward to sharing this practice with you again next weekend. Until then, take care.
Take care.